Supreme Court in its ruling recently dealt a huge blow to the LGBT or lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender community. That's right. The center has now held out one last ray of hope. Headlines today spoke to Rose Venkatesan. She's a transgender who's a talk show host from Chennai who's been active in campaign for the LGBT rights. She says she's disappointed with the court's ruling, but it has only strengthened her resolve to fight for justice. Entire country is debating about Section 377. But do we know how difficult it is for the sexual minority to break the barriers and emerge successful? We have with us Rose, who has struggled and come a long way. She was the first TV anchor, RJ, and now is directing a movie. Thanks for joining us, Rose. Sure. First of all, SC might have served a big blow to you, but government has extended some hope. As a very strong voice from the LGBT community, how do you see these developments? I was very appalled by the Supreme Court's decision. It was very shocking. Uh, but it, it highlights India's hypocrisy. If uh, the Supreme Court was set up primarily to ensure that the human rights of the minorities are uh, you know, upheld, the Supreme Court has failed to do its duty. I'm very, very upset about that. But at the same time, the entire LGBT community across the country more than ever has now come out and is now solidified the moment has gathered momentum and it's people are ready to you know leave everything that they have uh, you know held on to such as their jobs their homes their lifestyle anything they are willing to come out only to kill down 377 absolutely as a transgender life is very difficult you know for most of the transgenders we see many of them being pushed into sex trade or they are into begging how did you make the difference i know you have struggled for many years you have completed your engineering and did your masters in us but how has life been how how, how difficult was it to establish yourself Okay, this, this country is like, as you know, is, is highly patriarchal and as long as I maintained my male identity and projected myself as a guy, I was, you know, showered with privileges and all that. But the moment I came out and expressed my real nature, which is uh, as a woman, I felt a, a lot of uh, hardships. I faced a lot of hardships. I was thrown out of the home and all of that. But then there was this strong desire in me, this strong urge in me not to lose it out, not to prove society right in its view that transgender people are sick and unworthy and all that. I fought and uh, I mean yes it was, a, it was a big struggle but right now what I What kind have... of struggles? I mean if I may ask you what kind of struggles? I mean what did when I'll you professionally you approached people, how were you treated? Yeah. Just to tell you something, you know, you can't, being a transgender person, you can't even rent a home, you know. Also, with this recent development, there is also a national surge. People are talking about it. Of course, I know it's a big blow. Law is one thing. But we also see there is a surge. And do you think that will help people to come out of the closet, come out and declare their sexuality? The only thing that has, uh, you know, brought people out of the closet in this country is the internet. The internet has been a galvanizing force because before the internet we only had the mainstream media which kept on bombarding people with uh, you know our homophobic transphobic messages and patriarchal male dominant messages misogynistic messages but with the coming of the internet real people's freedom movements have gained momentum and as a result the LGBT movement ha in India has also gained momentum people have realized that this entire setup has been hypocrisy it's only religious hypocrisy so that religious people are able to control the masses by not allowing them to enjoy their sexuality the way, the way they want so LGBT people have come out and in fact more and more people are coming out by the day and uh, the movement has gained momentum and thank you so much to the internet because without which this moment would not have gained the kind of uh, acceleration momentum that it has gained so far and finally tell us about your movie uh, you wanted me to uh, when I when I was discussing before this I was telling what's the movie about and you were telling it's about gay love and then I, I asked can I say it's about homosexuality but he said no it's about gay love tell us what the movie is about yeah. My film titled Cricket Scandal, it's a film that I directed. It'll happen to be India's first film to be directed by a transgender person. In this film, I have projected gay love and transsexual love in a beautiful manner, like no other film has done in this country. Um, but at the same time, it, this film is also about the cricketing mafia. You know, there is a mafia that runs cricket in this country, which is all about match fixing and betting and stealing uh, billions and billions of Indian rupees. But I, I would like to point out 
I said it's not homosexuality, it's gay love because you know, you don't want to push gay love just to the level of sexuality. It's not just sex or sexuality. It's about human love. It's about human bonding. Okay, only if, I'm, if a gay guy is, you know, in love with somebody else, you know, he likes you. I mean, he, he loves you and he wants to be with you. He wants to share the warmth with you. That is when they enter the bond of love and sex and they go about doing it. But then people don't want love. They push love down so it becomes pure sexuality. But if you allow sexuality to, 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 to develop to its maximum you know, capacity, it'll actually be love. So I want to call it gay love. Absolutely. And we really wish you luck for this movie, for all your other future projects. And we really hope that change is on its way.